Hello guys and welcome back to Fatboss TV. Today we're continuing our series of previews. We're looking at the Iron Maiden encounter today from the Blackrock Foundry from the Warlords of Draenor Beta. On Heroic. On Heroic, that's right. And it's a good fight. It's very um like unique in a way. You like go on boats and you fight bosses on boats and then you fight like three bosses off of a boat. There's a lot of shit going on. Yeah. So if you like boats and three bosses, then this is the encounter for you. Definitely. So this encounter is a council boss and the bosses unlike traditional council bosses, do not have a shared health pool. Nope. Which means technically you could just nuke one of them down, which would make the fight a lot easier. Bad things happen when you do that, though. Yeah, there's so. another mechanic in play that prevents you from doing that. But ultimately, you can choose what bosses you want to kill first, and what bosses you want to drop down in health first, whichever one you want to be the lowest, because ultimately, of course, there has to be one that is lowest. And that does actually affect the fight and how people jump over to a boat. But we'll talk about that when we get to it. But before we go through any of the major mechanics, we're going to talk about all the bosses individually and what abilities they have. So first off, we're going to talk about Admiral Garan. And she has two abilities that you need to worry about, the first of which is Iron Shot, which just fires a shot at a random player, dealing some damage, and she pretty much spams this, like, permanently. Yeah, this is almost like her melee attack. Yeah, really. So it just kind of does a bit of it random just damage. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you can't really do anything about it. But the most interesting thing that she does is rapid fire. Now, what she'll do is that she'll target a player, put a debuff on them, and the debuff pretty much says, oh, shit, you're targeted by rapid fire. And then, like, one or two seconds later, like, giant AoE spawns from where you were those couple of seconds later, and it lasts, like, throughout the whole thing. So it's pretty much chasing you with giant bombs, and it does a shit ton of AoE damage. So if you're a melee, you're fuck everyone or if you're in like a group in range you fuck everyone so the idea is, is as soon as you get this debuff you go out as quickly as you possibly can so the first bomb that lands is out of the group and then you just kite it around like preferably around the edges of the room and generally where people aren't but if there is someone in your path tell them oh yeah fire is coming your way yeah move out the that's pretty much way. what you have to do because if you do get hit by like one or maybe two of these bombs you are pretty much dead yeah it does really really hurt so you've got to be very careful of them now moving over to Enforcer Sorka, she has an ability called Blade Dash. Now what this will do, it will target a player within 45 yards of her, and she'll just dash towards them. She doesn't actually dash towards them. It's sort of a similar animation to the ability from Kargath Blade Fist, so she doesn't actually physically go and hit these targets. She doesn't move to go hit them, it's just the animation of her spell. Um, and it'll do quite a large amount of physical damage, but it'll also do physical damage to anyone within eight yards of that target. So it's important that you It do... kind of spreads. It's yeah. like a chain lightning, but of her. So yeah, yeah you've got to be careful of it. It's... So pretty much just make sure you spread eight yards. And then another thing that's sort of added to the play dash once it's actually gone off is that afterwards she'll send out a tornado that sort of like bounces between where she was originally standing and where the player was originally standing where they got hit by the play dash. Um, and it will just bounce between them until the boss goes up on top of the boat, which we'll get to in a moment. Um, but the tornado, it just does damage and it will stun you if you get hit by it. So make sure that you do not stand anywhere near this tornado when it does come in. And they're totally predictable. As long as you know where the original person was standing, they're easy to dodge. Now the last boss is Marek the Blooded. And really she has one main ability, which is Blood Ritual. What will happen is that she will target a player within 45 yards and she, after a cast, will inflict a bunch of damage to that player and any player with players within a cone. So pretty much she like puts a beam between herself and another player and like that direction she'll just do a shit ton of damage. She'll do about 100k damage to anyone within that cone. So really you want to make sure that it's not facing anyone apart from the tank because the first target that it hits it will do like 300k damage and really that's pretty much one shot for pretty much anyone so you want it to be on the tank it is physical damage so you can make sure you like of course armor reduces it as well as you'll probably be using an active mitigation every time this comes in so really it's nice to have it so she's in the corner of a room or kind of at an edge of a room all the melee are behind her like against the wall so if you get the debuff on yourself you kind of run to the middle of the room and that's where the tank will be as well you'll like make a line so as long as you don't hit a hundred fucking thousand people every time you do it it should just be you and the tank that gets hit so nice and easy not too difficult now at certain time intervals we're not sure exact time it might actually be percentage uh, health of the bosses but it seemed really inconsistent for that to be the case we'll say it's time i'm pretty sure it is time um the bosses will leave the encounter area and jump on a ship that's directly behind you and depending on what bosses jumped on the ship depends what ads spawn on this ship and you need to send over a group of players to go deal with the ads and you do that by clicking up on six chains that spawn pretty much directly behind you as well and they always spawn in the same locations and if you really wanted to you could actually assign each person to each chain we didn't we just sort of said j just jump go up. on the chain they're all yeah. right next to each other so if one of them's taken just fucking click on the other one but, doesn't matter but when one boss is on the lowest health once you have completed the ship 
you won't get that one again. It will be the second lowest health target. And then after that, it basically rotates. Yeah, so it seems like you can kind of pick the first and the second. And then one, and then once the, the third one off, will be wh whichever boss you haven't done yet. And then yeah. it will repeat from that point, pretty much. So we're going to talk about all the different possible ships you can have and which boss needs to be on the lowest health for that set of ads to actually spawn. Now, the first ship we're going to sp talk about is when Marek the Blooded gets to the lowest health. Now, what she'll do, of course, she'll jump up on the ship, and what you need to do is send up one tank, one healer, and a bunch of DPS. And there'll be one big scary ad up there, and he's a bit of a bastard. Now, what you have to do, you have to tank him, but he only has one mechanic, but it's very, very irritating. Like, every two to three seconds or so, he'll place a pool under some uh, your feet as a player, and that pool does ridiculously high ticking damage once it becomes active. So the pool, like, lands, after a couple of seconds it becomes active, and then it does, like, huge ticking damage. So you just have to constantly keep moving, and that remains there forever. That, yeah, the basically, pools don't until leave. you've killed the guy, the pools are going to stay there. Yeah, so all you have to do, really, is kill the guy as soon as you quick, uh, possibly can without standing in pools, which it does sound really easy, but the thing is... Depending on your DPS, you might have to kind of arrange it because you can run out of space and you can kind of find yourself in a corner and then die because you have nowhere to run. And really, you can't really run across all of these. I know you can actually um, disengage over all of them and not take any damage, um, but I'm not sure about any other classes. So you could probably blink over it and all that sort of shit. Yeah. But ultimately, that's all you need to do. You just need to make sure that you try and keep the pools as bunched up as possible just to save space, especially if it's like tight on DPS, which it was for us a couple of times. And you did feel like, holy shit, there's so many fucking pools. Where yeah. And I move and you can sort of troll other people by like enclosing them in which I actually did to you a couple of times yeah um, but yeah that's pretty much all you need to do with that guy very very simple now in Force of Sorka's ship um, she'll spawn a guy called Gorak and this guy also does need a tank and a healer and, and obviously four DPS um, because he has quite a nasty ability where he'll throw a knife and it always hits the closest target and obviously you want that to be your tank it deals like uh, physical damage but it also reduces their movement speed uh, on the tank that is so you've got to make sure that you do have a tank over now there is also ads that spawn and these ads aren't really too much of a problem if you kill them quickly if you don't kill them quickly they have a stacking movement speed and haste buff um, but they also have a uh, every time they get a successful melee hit off on their target it'll actually increase the amount of damage they take from them but like I say, they don't have a lot of health. You can just blow them up instantly, and that's pretty much what you want to do. You can also CC them. You can stun them, knock them back. You can do whatever the fuck you want. Um, but ultimately, this guy, just tank him in the middle. He doesn't need to be moved around. You can just keep him stood still and nuke the adds when they spawn. And easy as that, so you need to do that one. And the last potential ship that you could have is a Garan ship. Now, on this ship, you'll have two adds. You'll have one called Uktar, and all this guy does is just fire a cone of bullets, dealing around 75k damage. You can't avoid this, um, so the idea is that you don't have players stacked. You don't have, like, so the cone hits multiple players, because if that does happen, the healer's going to struggle. And there's another guy called Rog. Now, what this guy does is, well, he does quite a lot of things, to be fair. He'll place a 350k shield on himself or on Uktar. He'll also create a pool on the ground that will also apply the shield, and he'll also cast a chain lightning effect. Um, however, all of those abilities are completely interruptible. Yeah. So essentially, you just need to keep interrupting him and you nuke him down first. But as you can see, everyone's positioned so that they're spread out around these guys. And these ads didn't seem to melee hit very hard at all, so we didn't even bother sending a tank over. We just had one healer and five DPS is the best way to deal with it. Um, but ultimately, it's just all about interrupting Rog. So you do actually need to set up some sort of rotation. You need We needed three interrupters. Maybe it'll be different on live. Now, after you've completed, like, you've killed all of the ads on the ship and everything is done and dusted, in order to get off the ship again, you need to set off, like, a little bomb that's over towards the bridge of the ship, like, towards the giant end of the ship where there's fire and shit. Run over to that, click on the bomb, you'll be lobbed off, and then that's the end of that. Um, if you don't do any of the ships in time, however, things just go off. horrible. Everyone we, fucking Everyone dies. dies. So, yeah, you've got to be nice Rip and quick and on peace. the ship. And, like, the thing is, you want to maybe, if you can, try and make it so you end towards the bridge of the ship so you can click on that bomb quicker. Because even if you killed all the ads, if you don't click on that bomb quick enough, you can still all just blow up. We did that a couple of times on Mythic. We had problems with that. So you've got to make sure, like, especially maybe with the one that you have to keep kiting with it, um, you know, uh, Marek's the blooded ship, you might want to make it so you end um, your kiting right at the end of that, or, like, towards the bridge so you can make sure you blow up the bomb. Nice and easy. Now, when one of these bosses do actually jump onto the ship, it's kind of a nice thing because you don't have to deal with that guy's mechanics anymore. However, every time one of the bosses does jump up, the entire room, the rest of the encounter room, 
gets filled up with bombs. Now, as these bombs land, any one they hit will actually take quite a well. They hit, take about 80k fire damage, but they'll also be knocked back at the same time. And then after that, there'll be a sequence of explosions from those bombs. And if you stand anywhere near those bombs, they'll pretty much one hit you. Yeah, they do a shit ton of damage, but it's very, very easy to see which bomb's going to explode at what point, because normally, as like maybe seven bombs land, and then what 20 bombs land and so you've got to move out those first seven bombs that land like and then move back into them so you don't get hit by the yeah. next set of bombs and, that land, and they, then move out again yeah exactly it's just and move out of things that are about to explode and before they simple. do actually explode they have like a slight animation where yeah. they sort of rumble and then glow red and then of course as soon as it has exploded you can just move back into that location and that will prevent you from getting hit by any other bombs um but yeah this was one of the things that we had problems with because yeah it's quite a lot of movement. It's, it's quite like a lot of movement. It's quite a like lot of bombs. And also, you do, you still need to deal with the mechanics of the other bosses that haven't jumped on the ship at the exact same time. Yeah. So if, if you have Marak still up, for example, and he does do his blood ritual, his frontal cone that also does physical damage to the tank, if multiple people get hit by that cone, which is entirely possible if you're stacked up in one little area because that's the only area that where the bombs aren't about to explode, and you'll get hit by that, it's a bit nasty. So it does yeah. require quite a lot of micromanagement in your movement. So ultimately, that's it kind of what kind of what we're showing you now at least that's all there is and the reason why that's the only stuff we can show you is because that's the only stuff that we actually managed to test there is a mechanic in play on this boss where i don't know if you guys noticed but there is all the bosses have sort of a fury bar an energy bar and this energy bar actually goes up over time it's got nothing to do with how much damage you've done to that boss it literally just goes up over time and at certain intervals, well, at 30 Fury and at 100 Fury, the bosses actually gain new abilities. But we unfortunately cannot actually show you guys the abilities in play because we never fucking saw yeah, them. Yeah, we didn't even get there, unfortunately. And yeah. I think it'll be a bit silly because this is like, of course, of course, this is a, it's preview, just a preview video. video. So we, we're showing you what we saw. We can't exactly say what we didn't see. So I, well, that, of course, will be included in the actual main guide. Yeah, once, we, once we do our live guide, of course, we'll, we'll share those abilities with you. But ultimately, the abilities that are coming in are pretty catastrophic yeah they seem pretty vicious they are manageable but just like a really horrible thing to have to deal with and of course you've got to keep in mind that some of these abilities are going to have to also be dealt with while the bombs are coming in as well so but the abilities that do actually come in at 100 fury i think on normal mode at least if everything stays like it does right now on the beta i think you can avoid those and those abilities entirely if you look at like the way that the percentages are going up compared to the bosses percentages actually going down we're killing the bosses quicker than their fury is actually going up however there is a mechanic in play called iron will which makes it whenever the bosses have like a very large health deficit compared to each other so say one is on 90 percent health and one is on maybe 10 percent health all of them will suddenly then go up to 100 percent fury and you'll have to deal with those mechanics so the idea is even though you have to choose which boss is lowest so you have to deal with that ship I mean, it doesn't really matter too much because you have to deal with all the ships anyway. You can't just nuke one of them down and leave the other ones on 100% health because otherwise they're going to be on 100% fury for the rest of the fight and you're going to have to deal with them. And this mechanic also makes it so they have a stacking damage increase that stacks every 20 seconds or so for 10%. Yeah. So if you just nuke one to zero and you have two on 100% health, you just could be fucked. You yeah. just be dead. It's going to be very, very difficult to deal with. So the idea, once again, stagger all the bosses down. Yeah. And that's pretty much it, though. Which overall. is really nice because it also sort of gives you that feel that you can't just nuke a single target. You do actually yeah. need to be clever about how you're doing damage because the bosses don't have a shared health pool. Mm. That is the whole point. You're supposed to act like they do when actually they don't. Well, like a lot of um, the council bosses, like even in the five mans going to the five mans, a lot of the council bosses in them, you can just kill one of the mobs and the other mobs are just like, oh, well, or whatever and yeah. it gets easier throughout the fight whereas this it actually it makes gets it, harder yeah it makes it more difficult so really i think this fight is going to be awesome of course it is the second to well it's the penultimate boss in the instance it's supposed to be done just before you do black hand so this boss is supposed to gonna it's going to be i a mean we we, fight. Yeah, we we found it quite difficult but anyway guys thank you very much for watching the video if you did enjoy this little preview please do drop us down a like and again let's make a make it completely clear this is just a preview the live guide will be up as soon as we manage to do it once Warlords is out in November. And of course, we'll see you on the live stream. So take care, guys, and we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.